I paid back my student loan with interest, but I didn't mind paying back my student loan. Anybody here object to paying back their student loan? They want charity? <laughs> no, 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 no. You honestly think it wasn't worth the money you paid and owe for it? So everybody agrees you got the value for your money. What you're going to rate it is when you get out there, the interest starts making your debt grow. I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife. I'll pay my tax for doctors, nurses to protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all I need to carry a golden sewer. I'll pay my tax for social service helping out the poor. I'll even pay my student loans. And I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. I don't mind paying for what I get, stuff, work. But I do object to paying for what I don't get, debt service. What do you get out of the government's debt service? Because the government doesn't use the Bank of Canada either. They go to the private banks, get in debt, pay them in tax, tax you and me. Well, I'm saying you kids better wake up or you're going to end up a raped generation. I came out of university, engineering degree, 2400 in debt 35 years ago. You're all coming up with 2830 Gs. A lot of you. Hey, a lot of you are going to end up broke and never get out of debt. Unless you beat the loan shark bank level and get to the Bank of Canada's computer. And I'm working on that machine all Time. my life. You should join me. Thank you. Okay, we have another question. Uh, <laughs> I admit, no cameras in Parliament's pretty funny, isn't it? Think about it. This is like back to the dinosaur. Bad radios, too. You know, whoa, bad computers soon. Holy cow. Anyway, the problem is big. Two, three hundred people see me, but during the televised debate, all they saw was the big four. The same four you see on TV all the time on CPAC. Because CPAC said, we don't want anything but the big four. So Rogers organized the debate with only the big four. And none of us. And they keep playing it over and over and over and over and over again. And it's a big debate. All the media come to do a big story about it. About the big four. And I'm saying, you don't really hear all the old time. You don't get the full menu. Big Brother stands up and says, we're not going to tell you what they have to say. They're kind of We're going to tell you what these four that you see on TV every day on CPAC are going to say. So if you really want nothing to change, vote for the four parties Big Brother keeps telling you to vote for. So anyway, they always say we're not going to waste our vote on a little guy who ain't going to win. And they keep voting for the guys that the media promote and making the major candidates. And that really influences the game because there's a lot of voters who are gamblers. The guys who look at who's got the most signs and try to pick the winner. Oh, the Tories, a lot of signs, they're going to vote for the Tories. Or the liberal, a lot of signs, liberal signs, vote for liberals. There's a lot of gamblers out there who think voting is a horse race. And that's why the media play like a horse race. Take a winner! That's what most people are trying to do. If they never get to hear them offering interest free loans, they're going to take one of the colors. Hope they take a winner. So that's that's your time, John. Thank you. The final response to this uh, question will come from Mike Hayden. Just, uh, I believe that two plain loads of gasoline melted three skyscrapers the day that my charcoal melts my barbecue. You can't melt steel with gasoline fires. Those buildings shouldn't have come down. It was a demolition. I have a degree in engineering. Anybody believes those things fell down, melted with two plate loads of gasoline, is an idiot. But, John Gracie in our parliament, they believed it. When George Bush said, come on and get it, go get them, off we ran. Here we are, the patsy posse, chasing the wrong guys who didn't do 911. Soldiers in a war, first war Canada's ever been in, where we're the guys wearing the black hats. We're the invaders, fighting with a man that's going to be children. We shouldn't be there. We shouldn't have believed Bush. He lied when he said those three buildings were melted by two plain loads of gasoline. I don't believe him. And if we're not, if they didn't take down those buildings, and the American government did instead, and they sick us on the wrong guys, the Taliban, we're the Patsy Pots. Well, the Council of Canadians asked me, what should we do? I said, we should surrender, right? Because we're the conveyors, and we should apologize, plead guilty to the war crimes trial for putting out a legitimate government, and offer reparations. We owe them for blowing up their country.
Thank you very much, John. That's the response from Mike Nagy. I don't hear that anywhere, but on a non-air. John, you've had your time. Right? After all that wonderful effort and so many liberal years in power, what's the result? You really want them back again? You believe them now? Same with the Tories. And if you were in power, but they always acquiesced. No, listen. It's the same solution. Not enough money out, not for students, not for this funding program, but another under, underfunding shortage we have to talk about. Gee, now I know Mike Maggie gets upset that I keep answering all these problems with the same answer. He's got a different answer for every symptom. And I keep coming up with the same answer for every symptom he wants to talk about because they're all caused by the same underfunding shortage of the bank's computers. Well, what does he know about banking systems and engineering? He thinks money wants like a piggy bank. He wants to take it from the rich, take it from the polluters, give it to the poor. That's not how it works. You borrow 10 from the pump house, it goes into the pool. You've got to come up with 11. It's called mortgage. Mort being death in Latin. Gage being gamble. Mort gage is the name of the contract. You're a student loan when you sign. All promise to pay back for it in Ukraine, and you've got to fight it out to the death to see who's the poor sucker gets foreclosed on. Yeah, I got the same answer to all problems because they're all the same cause. Shortage of money because of usury. Check it out. Thank you very much, John. Next response from John Young. Of course, with me as a choice, you can really vote for change. But there is a way to do that. It's called declining your vote. If you spoil it, you don't know why it was spoiled. You could have put an X instead of an O or the wrong, whatever. That's spoiled. But if you go in like I've done before, and you do your duty, it's exactly fine like that. They will report that you came in, and they will report that you chose not to vote for anybody. So there is a way to do that, but it's not on the actual vote itself, which it should probably be. You have to walk in there and say, I decline, and then they'll register that you came in, but you didn't vote. So there's a way to do it. And if the field stinks that much, like it once did for me, I did go in and decline my vote. But in this case, well, you have the chance of saying I voted against an interest-free credit card for myself. And someday I might be proud of it or not. Thank you very much. Mike, next. Uh, thank you. John, you next. Well, the bankers have already taken off with all the assets, and what they want to do now is foist all the debts on the taxpayer, worth nothing, and get the taxpayer to pick up the tab while they take off with the boot. Pretty good scam. Now, <laughs> shifting inflation, shifting inflation is a big lie. It explains why they do everything. Here's what happens with more guys. Ten guys, four or ten, and they all promise to pay back a lot, and they all put up their watches. At the end of the game, nine guys come up with 11. Tenth guy gets squeezed out of his death gamble, his mortgage contract. So everybody borrowing 10, everybody going to pay 11, one guy gets knocked out. Then they seize his collateral, his house, or his watch. And they say to the winners, how many chips you got? The original 100 in the game? Gee, now there's only nine houses back in your money. Your chips have inflated. Now, economics only teaches that if you got $100 chasing Inflation is an increase in the money chasing the houses. Well, I've shown you that inflation can be shift D. The same money chasing less houses after foreclosure. Well, they always show you pictures of guys with wheelbarrows for inflation. Too much money chasing the goods. Well, guess what? This isn't our problem. We've got stores full and people got empty wallets. It ain't too much money. It's too much foreclosure. So, go check out shift D inflation. Google for it to come up with only analysis by the only banking systems engineer in the world on how inflation really works and how it causes it. Thank you. 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 Well, when do you want to go to Turkestan next? You want to bring your mission to Somalia? You want to take your mission to Sudan? What's so special about Afghanistan? You want to be in there. 
I don't want our invaders, I mean our boys, anywhere, especially on the invader's side. Bring them home, defend me here, yay. Go invade someone else over there, no. So, sorry kid, until you can come up with some explanation why we ain't helping the rest of the world with our mission, why Afghanistan? It's a pretext, it's a lie for reasons they don't tell you about. And it's got nothing to do with bringing development to Afghanistan. Probably an oil type one. Regardless, the Taliban, they were the guys who were at the United Nations with me in 2000 during the Millennium Assembly. And the Taliban, with a legitimate government, almost wiped out the opium crop. Oh, we have to have a room behind the doors. Big deal, we're going to be up free soon. Saddam let all his women free from their burqas, they got rid of him. So burqas had nothing to do with either. We're in there for the wrong reasons. I want to get our boys home. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> well, it started back in the last provincial election where I showed the, on the Rogers debate, I showed them my left software sticker. And so the moderator called the police in and had me taken away. Okay? And uh, there's that picture of the moderator taking me away. And then later on, another meeting, they then had all the high school kids come to one class of them. And at that high school there, they then then Okay, John, it's a 30 second response. Thank you. So four times, like, oh yeah, 30 seconds. Yes. Okay, I'm here because I'm going to get a fair. That's it, John. Mike, <laughs> <laughs> you're next. If you're on a fair game. Well, in judging the substance tonight, I want you to go home and try to remember anything these other candidates said, and I bet you most of you won't. Well, then, what, one, two, three, in 1996, I ran against Sheila Cops in a bio-action, and I told the people, I don't need to get elected to get my mission accomplished. You just need one person with a brain to go pick up the let software online and start your own let's do it yourselves. Well, there's the headline of the election. Super loser fails again. But exactly one month to the day after, the Hamilton Spectator announced, Hamilton Self-Help Group starts up Hamilton Let's. Local employment trading system using our own chips. So, bang, mission accomplished. Well, when I went to Europe a few years ago, I contacted the Lexus in all the towns in Europe and I said, listen, I'll pay for another accommodation for the Knights Act in Canada. He said, that's how it works. Okay. So, everywhere I went, 39 nights out of 40, I didn't pay cash. I paid with an IOU back in the Ottawa Lex. Well, well, used to have a Lex 20 years ago. Is there any reason your Gulf Student Council couldn't ask your Gulf Student Engineer Society to start an online time bank, local employment trading system? I don't have to get elected to get what I want done. I just need one person with a brain to go pick up the time bank software and get your student council to give everybody as an account. Which all the time. It's the same thing as a Bank of Canada account, except it's done by your student council. You don't need the Bank of Canada if you do it yourselves and you start swapping with students around the world. So, I hope you guys got the engineers and the student council to follow up and give wealth a last time. Thank you very much, Sean. That concludes our uh, All Canada.
I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, the most dangerous engineer on the planet. This is a picture of me being taken away by the police yesterday from the Nevada High School. I was taken away from the debate by the Chamber of Commerce in the by-election. I only came here to run because of Brent. The cops took me away four times in one election, which was a record. Here, two so far. My point, only the Greens spoke up for me. Read about it in today's paper. Tom, Frank, Gloria sat there, took the extra advantage. I said, hey, you guys are cheating me. You call that sportsmanship? And the only guy who bitched about it was our Green candidate here. These guys, they don't know about sportsmanship. They cheated me. Now, what's so dangerous about my message? Here it is. I want everybody to be able, I want to reprogram the Bank of Canada's computer to operate like PayPal. And since they have no depositors, not like a piggy bank, like a casino bank, issuing new chips, and I want everybody to be able to go out there and like a student loan, borrow from the Bank of Canada, instead of going student loans from the private loan shark banks, so that six months after you get out of school, there's no more interest on your loans like there will be now, you, the new generation, the debt slaves. But if you can get an account at the Bank of Canada and bypass the loan shark banks, that's your heaven. That's what I want. Now, you can pay it back if you borrow from your national bank in cash or in time. Work. Google for time standard of money. I coined the expression of the United Nations in 2000 when I gave a speech on banking to the Monument Assembly. Time standard of money. Not just gold standard for collateral, stuff standard for collateral, but time standard for collateral. Your promise to work is enough to get a loan from the National Bank starting grade one. Aw, oh, heck, starting in babies. No more begathons for sick kids on TV. I'm sick of it. Give them a credit card and let them pay for themselves when it's an adult. So, the day everybody's got an account with the Bank of Canada, the Our Father is fulfilled. Give us today tomorrow's bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Well, you right. don't have anybody chasing you for debts. You have to stop me there. That's all that heaven. Thank you. Of course, yes and yes. But why the underfunding problem in the first place? Well, I'm going to explain why I'm going to get a Nobel Prize someday in economics. You'll algebra, grade 9 e, you can keep up. Okay, now I'm in the Guinness Book of Records, but that's most elections. And I'm in the United Nations Millennium Declaration to get you an interest for your time-based credit card someday. But in a nutshell, here's how economy works. Morgage means death gamble in French. Ten people will borrow with ten. They all put up their watches collateral. They all promise to pay back eleven. At the end of the game, nine guys come up with eleven. Tenth guy gets squeezed out of his death gamble, just like musical chairs. So ten students who all have a student loan, they all borrow with ten, they all owe eleven. At the end of the game, one gets squeezed out of poverty and is busted. And the banker seizes his watch. Says to the winners, how many dollars? About a hundred. Gee, no, there's only nine watches here. One's inflated. So even though economics teaches that if you've got a hundred dollars chasing ten watches, inflation is an increase in the money chasing the watches, shift A. I'm the discoverer of shift B inflation that's not taught in economics. Too much foreclosed watches. So interest creates the foreclosure of the collateral that results in shift B inflation. It doesn't fight inflation like you're told in every article out there in economics. So economics teaches you only shifting inflation too much money for the collateral. And that would be true if you had wheelbarrows full of money and store shelves empty. But we've got store shelves full and people's wallets empty. So the inflation we think about and suffer has got nothing to do with too much money. It's got to do with shifting inflation, too little collateral behind the money. Now, Get to the casino style model at the Bank of Canada so all corporations can borrow enough to settle all the mortgages, pay off all their interest bearing debt, and then every payment after that goes against the principal. And then someday everybody's out of debt. But as long as the government gives the right to create the money to the private banks and they can loan shark it to us 10 for 11 all the time, that's how they create the poverty, that's how they create the underfunding. And that's why my solution to the cause and the underfunding is the one solution answer. I've heard complaints to always the same answer to all the problems. Yeah, but they're all underfunding.
problems, health underfunded, education underfunded, military underfunded, infrastructure, everything's underfunded, and they got different answers for each symptom, and I got one answer for the cause. The cause of poverty is interest on money. The cause of poverty is the fact that we owe more than they loaned into existence. And as long as we owe more, hey, look at noise here, what's going on? Anyway, the cause of poverty is as long as we owe more than they loaned into existence, you're going to live a generation of debt slaves like mine did. And I feel like my generation is a pretty stupid generation for having had access to computers and electronics, and we're still tricked by a stupid scam called Mort Dodge. Uh, our first candidate is John Tremell, independent candidate. 
Well, I'm known as John the Engineer. I've worn the white hard hat as a symbol for many years. And I'll talk about using the Bank of Canada's interest-free funding to solve all our shortages. But now I want to talk about the war. This is Canada's first bad war. I don't believe that the Taliban managed to melt three steel buildings with pl two plane loads of gasoline. I don't believe the Taliban could have called off the U.S. Air Force. And I don't believe the Taliban could have prompted the U.S. administration to make so many lies. Therefore, I don't believe the Taliban did 911, and George Bush sicked us, the Canadians, the patsy posse, on the wrong guys. So we're in Afghanistan chasing the wrong guys. First bad war, wearing the black hats, foreign invaders. Well, my strategy is we've got to either retreat or surrender, plead guilty at the war crimes trials. The lead party leaders who voted to go there believe Bush when he said that the Taliban took down those buildings and then offer reparations. Now we can get out of there. But there's no way this is a moral war. And what scares me most is the Harper administration on Valentine's Day signed an agreement so that they can call on the U.S. Army to come into Canada if ever I give them too hard a time. You didn't hear about that, did you? Valentine's Day, U.S. Army agreement. They can come into Canada. The guys who did Afghanistan, the guys in Iraq, the guys who set up the death squads all over Latin America, the Phoenix death squads in Vietnam. Harper just invited them into Canada, gave them a pass into the country. The U.S. torture machine. They can come here now. Valentine's Day. Thank you, Mr. Harper. And look at the other parties who said nothing about it. They can't read. They didn't hear about this agreement about the U.S. Army being, he can call on the U.S. Army if he wants. Well, I'm sorry, there's bad times with the Tories and the Liberals and the parties who let them get away with this, and I would certainly make a stink about it if I got into Parliament. Wow. John Turmel. We're on the verge of a Great Depression, and he's optimistic. I want to use the Bank of Canada in a new way. Okay, the Bank of Canada has no depositors. It's not like the loan shark banks. Okay, the Bank of Canada lends the loan shark banks, then they loan shark it to us, the TD, the Royal, the Scotia. I want an account at the Bank of Canada. I want to skip the loan shark banks. I want to open an account at the Bank of Canada like PayPal, and I borrow interest-free, new chips like a casino, settle all my debts, and after that all my payments to the Bank of Canada go against principal. And even the poorest guy someday gets out of debt. It's only the damn usury that makes people in debt forever. So, I'll be talking about regularly using the LET software, that's the diskette I'm not allowed to wear on TV, my party symbol, LETS. And there's a UNILETS resolution of the UN for time-based money. So, you have to do some homework, this isn't much time to explain it, but I'll have more chances. People who are running for office run into writings in which they live. John Turmel. Well, I'm a professional gambler living across the street from the Brantford Casino. And I came to the Guelph by election. Well, last year in the provincial election in Brant, four times they excluded all, the six actually excluded the minor candidates. And four times the police removed me and two times I got on. Well, when I came to the by election here, I only had to fight for the right to speak once. And the police only removed me once. So I figured this is the place to come if you want to get heard. I'm taping this thing. I post it on the internet. So you guys want a fairer game than they do in Brant. And in this election here, I was only taken away by the police once at the high school, uh, the vocational institute, where the principal decided that he only wanted to have the big four you see on TV all the time. So West Coffee, you shouldn't be teaching kids in Canada go back to Russia. And uh, but that's a pretty good reason to come here. I only got banned once by the school principal. And over in Bradford, I was taken away four times. So you guys want a fair game. Hunter Mel. Well, given sufficient paychecks, we have the people, the material, and the tools to do our best. And with the people, material, tools, and only lacking money, the Bank of Canada could fill the gap to provide enough employment for everybody to participate. Now, this has been done before. Who ever heard the expression to tally up? To tally something up, to match. King Henry I in 1100 
had his Bank of England issue interest-free money called tallies. He took a split, split it, a stick, split it in two. This half became a poker chip worth 10 pounds of gold. This half became the stone. He paid for all the expenses like we could do to clean the environment and build bridges with brand new tallies. And at the end of the year, he said to the accountants, how many tallies do I owe? A million tallies? Hey, everybody, that's the tax. And it exactly matched the tallies spent. So it can be done. It was done before. Let's do like King Henry and use our Bank of Canada to fund the jobs to clean the environment. Camille. No. Well, when I first ran in 1979 to legalize gambling, prostitution, dope, they called me the champion of the gamblers, hookers, and dope smokers. I want to decriminalize all victimless crime. Gambling, I got tired of being busted. Prostitution, shy and less attractive people got a right to get laid. And drugs, nobody should be able to tell you what you should do with yourself. So therefore, those are personal freedoms I want. So that, for instance, in 2003, I went on Parliament Hill with seven pounds of marijuana for Prime Minister Gratier to prove that the law was dead. I made him drop the charges against 4,000 people. You didn't hear about that, right? And if you did, they didn't even mention my name, Blackout on Termel. But nevertheless, yes, decriminalization solves all the problem. Prohibition is the problem. Lincoln said, prohibitions are bad because they criminalize human appetites, and that is stupid. So yeah, if they're not bothering me, I want the state to leave them alone. Philip Bender. Well, I, I agree with John. He's very sounding very libertarian. <laughs> there are... I tried to join your party, you wouldn't let me. John, I gave you 30 seconds to respond later. <laughs> I named you. Um, there no, you were named by another candidate. Uh, you're welcome to a 30-second rebuttal. Okay, I would just point out that they recently found studies that said marijuana kills cancer, and they knew about it since 1970. University of Saskatchewan in 2006 discovered that marijuana regrows brain cells. Drink, have a hangover, your brain cells die, it hurts. Smoke marijuana, grow new brain cells, it feels good. And of course, none of, not too many of these people have been growing brain cells, right? Which explains why I'm so sharp and they're so dull. Our next question comes from the media panelist for Magic 106. John Turmel. Well, we don't need more doctors, we don't need more hospitals, we don't need more drugs, we need less sick people. And that can be done by healthy thinking, healthy eating, healthy habits. So bad habits cause the diseases, cause us to die, and you cause expensive. Of course, yes, everybody likes the idea of everybody having access to health care. The question is, should it be paid for privately or by the state? Either one's fine by me, as long as I got access. I don't really care. I end up paying for it in the end. But I like the idea that the better doctors can ask for more, and the better nurses can ask for more. And as long as I got a credit account at the Bank of Canada so I can afford them and pay back with either cash or with time at work, well, I don't mind if the doctor says I'm worth an extra 100 hours per hour or whatever per operation than the next guy. I'll say, yeah, if we get it, it must be pretty good. That's capitalism. I like that ethos. So I can get along with the Marxist Leninists and the capitalists because let's is the perfect blend of the two. Oh, strategic voting. How many times have I heard that? I'm not going to vote for you because you're not going to win. Well, that's because there's so many gamblers out there. You know, the majority of the people aren't voting for anyone in particular. They're trying to pick a winner. They think it's a horse race. Who's got the most signs to lose? I'm voting blue this time. And anyway, when, yeah, I got the winner. Well, you're not going to win anything when you pick the winner just because you have more signs. Well, that's what these guys are all after with all their signs out there. How many people are going to hear what I have to say? 1% maximum are going to know that they could have had interest-free credit cards and they end up voting no. Har, har, har. Well, that's what strategic voting is all about. They figure, oh, the Tories were so bad, we're going to get rid of them. And then the Liberals want to get rid of them. And it's back and forth every time kicking out the bums. Remember how we had Trudeau kicked out, and we had Mulroney kicked out, and we had Crazy kicked out? It's always kick out the bums. But we always have to vote for the other guys because otherwise we're not going to get the bums out. That's what strategic voting gets you. Nothing new. <laughs> Drew Gurney. John Chamel. Well, I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife, right? 
and I'll pay my tax for doctors and nurses who protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all engaged repairing road and sewer, you too. I'll pay my tax for social servants helping out the poor, you too. I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. So I don't mind paying for what I get. I just don't want to pay for what I don't get. I want to pay for people service, not debt service. And as long as we don't run our own community currency system, my first poem in politics, why represent our collateral with their chips for a fee, when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? So, yes, back to the interest-free banking. As long as I get a chance to pay my tax for stuff I get, I got no problem. And I'll borrow it to pay it and earn it off. Gloria Kovac. After that rant, I'm sorry. Can you re can I have the question repeated? John Tramiel. Well, all over the world, there are rebel forces seeking independence, and government forces trying to stop them. Why can't governments let them go? Why? Why do they have to attack them and keep them? And why is there war over these secessions? You know why? Because they got no way of sharing the debt. If they go, they're going to leave the original country with the debt to the banks. So they have to take their share of the debt with them. And that means you're going to have to get economists arguing about how much of the debt they should share. And they'll never come to an agreement. So it's because the land is mortgaged to the banks by the big government that they can't let rebels secede or they lose their credit rating. And that's why everywhere you have governments crushing rebel movements trying to escape because the land is mortgaged. No. Well, they say that the human activity is causing the melting of the ice caps on Mars as well as on Earth, right? Must be their humans doing it too. So there's something wrong with the theory. Now, they've actually reported that this year's loss of ice cap is less than last year. And now they're talking about global cooling again. Remember in the 1970s when they said global cooling was coming because there's less evaporation to send the steam up to the north to renew the ice? And less ice means a sign of global cooling? And now we have Gore telling us it's a sign of global warming. Well, increased costs can be paid with a little extra work. Frank Valer, John Turmel. Well, since the Chamber of Commerce debate, I've asked every audience, how many people in the room think I should have been excluded from here tonight, too? Here, here. No, 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 excluded. Yes. All right, good. Well, vote for me for interest-free banking at the Bank of Canada. Vote for me for a loud mouth to harass the, bank, the government to get the soldiers out of Afghanistan. Vote for me to harass the government to get the U.S. Army out of Canada. And finally, I'll object to the boring and gray Ted Rogers way when they banned us from wearing our party buttons. I have one symbol, my let software diskette which I wore at every meeting in this election on my lapel like this. When I put it on my lapel in Brantford, the police took me off the debate. I think well, that's why these guys are here today. Well, I don't like the boring and great Ted Rogers way. I want to wear my party button. Phil, put on your button. Be like a man. Anyway, screw Ted Rogers. I want my buttons in the future on color. <laughs> Everyone, I'd like to thank you, uh, all stakeholders. Interesting. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Long time no see. Yeah, did you enjoy that? <laughs> it was hysterical. I enjoyed the funny guy. How do I do? No doubt. I broke the rules. I got my butt turned. <laughs> All right, off. Shh.
Vous pouvez décider. I'm known as John the Engineer. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records for running in more elections than anyone else, and losing more elections than anyone else. But that's not my real claim to fame. Eight years ago at the United Nations, all the world's leaders showed up for the Millennium Assembly, the end of the millennium. And I was there too. You see Bill Clinton, you see the Arab Prince, Tony Blair, Chinese Prime Minister, and John Turnell. I was in the UN walking around with the white hard hat, giving the speech on banking. And I said, we have to run money like poker chips, with no interest, and people have to be able to buy in not only with their gold, the gold standard, and their stuff, the stuff standard, but their time, the time standard of money. Well, I'll be talking about how an account at the Bank of Canada would give you all student loans years ago and would make life easier in all of the other questions about not enough money. But right now I'm going to talk about the war. This is Canada's first bad war, where we're the guys with the white hat, the bad hat, the bad black hats. We're the invaders, the foreign invaders attacking families and killing men and women. That's us, our first bad war. Now, I don't believe that these Arabs, the Taliban, managed to melt three steel buildings with two plane loads of gasoline. I don't believe they managed to call off the U.S. Air Force protection. And I don't believe they managed to talk the U.S. administration to producing all these lies about it. So I don't believe the Taliban did 911. So what are we doing in Afghanistan? Well, George Bush sick us on the innocent victims. We're the patsy posse chasing the wrong guys who didn't do 911. So obviously if I got to Parliament, I'd make a big stink about this being a bad war. I want our guys to retreat. I want the Prime Minister to plead guilty to the war crimes trial for invading and putting out a legal government. And then we offer reparations. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, it's costing too much, oh, it's too much effort. This is a bad war. We shouldn't have been there in the first place. We're the black hats. And guess what? The Taliban white hats, they're coming back. And they're going to kick our asses, and we deserve it. Now, they might say, I'm not very patriotic, but I want to get our guys out of there, because they're not supposed to be there. So you're not going to hear this from anybody else. And if you want a real shit disturber in Parliament, that's what they've always called John the Engineer. And I taught a class that I'll destroy all their cherished ideals and get us out of that war is number one. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your past comments. I'm now to invite our third the Independent. to legalize marijuana. Woo! You can Google for banking systems engineer, I come up, or you can Google for net pot engineer, I come up. That's because back in 2003, that's a picture of me being arrested by the RCMP on Parliament Hill, being Prime Minister of Croatia, seven pounds of marijuana. <laughs> I wanted to prove the law was dead at that moment in time, and you'll notice they dropped the charges against four. People, 4,000 charges dropped, and the media didn't even mention my name. Cover up. Well, anyway, I have kids at my website to help people fight for charges. I have charges being fought all over the country right now. So I, too, am in favor of legalizing the herb, getting the old generations off the bottle onto the herbal. Besides, marijuana kills cancer, they found out. Yeah. Last year, University of Saskatchewan found marijuana regrows brain cells. You drink alcohol, you destroy brain cells, you got a hangover the next day. Smoke marijuana, grow brain cells, you feel good. Okay? You know, these guys haven't grown many brain cells. That explains why I'm so sharp and they're so dull. Number two, did you know that on Valentine's Day this year, the Tories signed an agreement with the United States to allow the U.S. Army to come into Canada if Harbor River feels threatened. 
And of course you're a feudal Spartan. He can call on the Canadian army to go fight with Americans. You know that, didn't you? Didn't make much news. Well, I don't like the idea of the American army coming into Canada. These are the guys who trained the death squads throughout all of Latin America. Somoza, Papadoc du Valier, dictators before your time. Vietnam Phoenix program murdered 20,000 people. Well, these death squad trainers, Harper just gave an invitation to come into Canada. Valentine's Day! U.S. Army signs an agreement they can come into Canada if Harper feels threatened. I don't like the idea of these death squad guys coming into Canada. I can't imagine why the Liberals and the NDP and the Greens didn't say anything about them signing an agreement to get the U.S. Army into Canada. I want the U.S. Army out of Canada. So anyway, I criticize all the parties in Parliament for allowing this agreement with the United States Army. Why, the Canadian Army can't handle riots in the streets? What is Harper expecting that he signs an agreement to have help from the U.S. Army? Because the crash wasn't supposed to come this week, it was supposed to come next week after the election, once he was prime minister. Then when there's thousands of people in the streets, maybe you can call in the U.S. Army to show you how to tackle poor people. So yeah, I criticize them all for that. Sorry, Mr. Trumbo, your time is up. Thank you once again. Well, I think that if you have a shoreline, that is your land. And Russia has half of the Arctic shoreline around the top. We have a little bit. Alaska has a little bit. You know, we've got Denmark and Sweden. But if it's your land bordering on it, it's like the same thing everywhere else. Why would it be different? <laughs> Yeah, when you invade another country, there is the threat that they might come and shoot you back. Right? And we are wearing the, what, the bat, black hats, we're the bad guys over there, so a lot of them would be tempted to come and get revenge on us for what we did to their families and kill their loved ones. So, no, there's nothing we can do short of the unilats. Time standard of money. It can not only solve poverty in Canada, it can solve poverty around the world. As long as your collateral at the bank is your time at work, even the poorest man can get along. And as long as you can pay it back with cash or with work time, even the poorest man can pay off his loan. It's only the damned usury condemned by Nehemiah, Jesus, Isaiah, Abraham, Muhammad, in all the good religious books, only the damn loan sharking that's keeping the whole world in debt. So there's nothing we can do when poor, broke people fight over not enough. But if we could fix the shortage of money, poverty, then they wouldn't have any reason to want to fight at all. And that would also give us a good excuse to get out of Afghanistan, because now they're doing okay. We don't have to bring them development after George Bush blew them up. Would everyone please stand and give these brave candidates another round of applause? Please remain standing as Ms. Taylor types the candidates off the stage.